In this lecture, we're going to talk about the digital subscriber line, better known as DSL. This is going to be one of the two more popular options for home use in residential applications. There's going to be DSL and there's going to be broadband cable. So with DSL, we're going to be utilizing our phone line and DSL is a high speed internet application that allows us to use our plain old telephone system. And what it does is that it sends data digitally over our phone line. And to do so, it utilizes a combination of a DSL modem and a DSL splitter. So the way that this works is that you have your phone line jack on your house and you plug in a splitter. And the splitter is going to split that up into two different outputs, one to go to your modem and then one to go to your phone. And then from your modem, it's our standard setup. We have a router and then we have our LAN within our house. Now, the great thing about DSL is that we can utilize both our internet and our phone line at the same time, something we couldn't do with dial up. Now there is a limitation when it comes to DSL and the limitation is, is that your telecommunication company's central office where all of their network is, it has to be somewhere within 4,000 and 18,000 feet of your home. And the distance is going to vary based upon the type of DSL that you're purchasing. And we're going to talk about three common types on the next slide. So this is the way that DSL works from a very high level perspective. Let's now talk about those different types of DSL. So there's three different types of DSL that I want to talk about in this lecture. And those are asymmetric DSL, symmetric DSL, and very high bitrate DSL. So what's the difference between asymmetric and symmetric DSL? Well, asymmetric DSL, this is a consumer version of DSL where they're going to allocate more bandwidth to your download than to your upload. And when we're talking about downloading and uploading. We're talking about downstream data and upstream data. So when we're downloading data, that's our downstream data. And when we're uploading data, well, that's when we're uploading to the internet. So why do they do that? Why would they allocate more to downloading? Well, if you think about residential users, 90% of us are going to be downloading much more than what we're uploading. When we're watching YouTube or Netflix or browsing the internet, a majority of the data that's coming to us is going to be downstream and we're not going to be sending a lot upstream. So that's the whole purpose of asymmetric. And to give you an example of the speeds, one of the latest versions, which is ADSL plus, that offers download speeds of around 24 megabits per second and upload speeds of only around one megabit per second. So there's a huge difference between what you get for downloading and what you get for uploading. Now with symmetric DSL, you're going to get equal bandwidth for both uploading and downloading, but it's very, very slow. This is very antiquated. It's a T1 equivalent in the United States and in Europe, it's an E1 equivalent. So 1.544 megabits per second in US and Canada and two megabits per second in Europe. This is going to be more common in a business environment and very less common in residential environments. But compared to all the other options out there now in 2021 and beyond for businesses, this really isn't going to be that popular. So let's lastly talk about the very high bitrate DSL because that is our modern replacement for ADSL and SDSL are asymmetric and symmetric DSL. Well, why is that? Well, in terms of very high bitrate DSL, the speeds that it can offer are going to be much higher than the other two. So for VDSL, it can offer an asymmetric option or a symmetric option. And for the VDSL to V plus version, the asymmetric option offers 300 megabits per second download speeds and 100 megabits per second upload speeds. And in terms of the symmetric option, it offers both 100 megabits for both download and upload speeds. So if we compare these to the older versions of asymmetric DSL and symmetric DSL, this is a drastic improvement. So this is going to be more common than the other two, but you're still going to see asymmetric DSL because, well, it's going to be a lot cheaper than VDSL. So that is DSL. If you have any questions as to what I covered in this lecture, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video. Take care. 
Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.